I'm hearing in my spirit tormenting spirits. This is what God wants to take. Spirits that torment people, whether in dreams or visions, whether as afflictions or infirmities. I want to declare right now. Please, I want you to bring them out in the name that is above all names. I decree and declare anyone here who is a victim of tormenting spirits that torment you day and night medically, that torment you spiritually, at the count of three, let that fire fall right now. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. Are you ready? One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be delivered from the influence of tormenting spirits. Please, whether you are an usher or not, be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now from the influence of tormenting spirits. Be free now. The power of God is still coming upon people. Right now, the power of God, help them please. The power of God is still coming upon people. Be delivered now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Alina Mareka Toshalika Preskatibata. Embra Katoskiata. Satan get lost. Let God's people go now. In the name of Jesus. Now I'm about to pray. I'm seeing chains on people's feet. There are spirits that have kept people in one place so that you don't move. As soon as I pray, fire will begin to fall on a few people. Father, I decree and declare everyone who has been bound by the spirits of stagnation and delay, as you shout Jesus, be released now. Are you ready? One, two, three, shout Jesus. Be released. Be released. Please bring them out. I decree and declare. I prophesy your liberty from these tormenting spirits. Help them, please. Every devil of stagnation, every spirit tying you down, leave now. Someone open your mouth and declare, I'm moving forward. Go ahead, open your mouth and begin to declare that in the name of Jesus, I am making advancement in life and destiny. Every devil in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power that raised Christ from the dead. I'm still praying. You hear about good things, but your hand never handles it. You keep hearing that good things are to happen, and yet you are never able to take possession. I want to pray right now in the name of Jesus anyone who is a victim of this that good things are always around your neighborhood and yet you never take possession of it the power of God is coming upon you right now the spirit that is responsible for a Paris Qatar for those patterns I decree and declare be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now There is a lady you are from Edo State. There is a spirit that has tormented your entire family. I will not let you go free. Right now, help her. The power of God is coming upon you from Edo State. I'm seeing the anointing even coming on people, not just one person, many people. Edo State. Be delivered now. Bring them out. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. The Lord is ministering to me. There's someone here. Every time your time of promotion comes, you have a dream and you will see yourself in a place where you have been before. And that will be the end of it. I don't know who that is, but the anointing is coming upon you. Please bring them out. There's a reason why I ask that you bring them out. It's not just for show. I decree and declare whoever that person is, fire from heaven is resting upon you now. Fire from heaven is resting upon you now. Fire from heaven is resting upon you now. 
the Lord is showing me a family all the women in that family have similar dreams dreams of retrogression this is from your mother to the sisters the, the ladies right now the power of God is coming on all the ladies who are here in the name of Jesus these ladies bring them out I break that chain from that family I break that chain from that family I release that family right now 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 please whether you are an usher or not if someone is under the anointing please help to bring them you don't have to wait for the ushers there might be too much for them to do I'm hearing the name Jennifer the season where demonic holds over your life is breaking I'm hearing the name Jennifer in the name of Jesus I break that demonic hold right now I break that demonic hold right now Jennifer I break that demonic hold right now I break that demonic hold right now I break that demonic hold what's her name hold on please don't take it easy my dear where are you coming from look at me shout Jesus as loud as you can I cast that spirit now be delivered completely in the name of Jesus for every other person in the name of Jesus this lady holding her stomach something is leaving your stomach I cast that spirit out of her right now in the name of Jesus Christ release her destiny now in the name of Jesus Christ my goodness God is setting people free I'm seeing God take things out of people's stomachs like I don't know like growth or whatever I declare anyone having a fibroid or any kind of demonic growth right now fire from heaven is coming upon you that devil dissolves now that devil dissolves now I'm hearing a name Israel Israel and the Lord is speaking to me that this gentleman it is time for God to use you to visit your family this is what God is telling me who is Israel what do you do my friend Huh? I'm an architect. You are an architect. Yes, sir. Do you believe if I tell you God is going to use you yes, sir. as a deliverer in your family? Yes, sir. My goodness. Father, in the name of Jesus, I use him as a point of contact to every Israel here. What he says to one, he says to all. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, I release that grace upon all of you. Take that grace right now. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will use you to set your family free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. There is someone I want to pray for. You don't have to come out. But the power of God is visiting people. Do you know that death is a spirit? D-E-B-T. Not death. Death. Borrowing. There, there are people who are addicted to it like drugs. It's not that you are bad. This thing is a pattern. You have seen it. God wants to break it in families. I don't know where that family is. But right now. The spirit that has tied people financially walking and living in debt be delivered now be delivered now there is a gentleman here you came from one of the northern states the hand of God is upon your life and he's going to use you mightily I don't know where that gentleman is but the anointing is of the spirit is coming upon him right now you you came from the north your ministry is right there in the name of Jesus Christ God is going to use you like a like like a, a tree that just springs out a store from nowhere it's a mighty anointing you will sweep across your city with the fire of revival I release that grace upon you now I release that grace upon you now I release that grace upon you now there are three people up the balcony the power of God is coming upon them. The Lord is saying it has come to an end. I don't know what it is, but that's what I hear. It has come to an end. It has come to an end. I decree and declare, wherever you are, help them please, across the balcony. The power of God is touching you. It has come to an end. In the name of Jesus. Please don't just pick them and take them back. Ushers, you should know better, please. Let me do my prayer for them. There's a reason why I ask them to come. Please return that lady who is going back, please. 
it's not about bringing them out to show a man of God is powerful no please don't just pick them when they think there is a reason why we ask them to come out they don't have to come out but when God instructs then it's important otherwise you will just take them back to their various bondages for all those who are out here in the name of Jesus I decree and declare every spirit that has tormented you right now for all of you I declare at the count of three let them go release their destinies one two three go 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 out of them now out of them now out of their lives now in the name of Jesus everything that has been stolen let there be a restoration let there be a restoration let there be a restoration as I pray for them I pray for you everything that has been stolen in the name of Jesus restoration supernatural restoration in the name of Jesus Christ release them now in the name of Jesus the Lord is still showing me a family your father is a pastor but there is absolutely nothing that is working in that family a sincere man of God who loves God but poverty failure shame this is what has characterized his family I don't know who that person is you are a lady in the name of Jesus is there someone like that please make sure you verify let's not just have people coming out carelessly your father is a pastor I want to pray the devil is a liar just put them they can stand one place anywhere there I want to pray for them you see look at this you can imagine this kind of demonic mockery a man who is who is spending his life serving the Lord and then the devil will want that nothing works in his life you see so it can discourage members it can discourage people they can say if you are a man of God why are these things not working for you but in the name of Jesus you came here for this miracle service tonight I'm praying for you there are so many of you so I will use you as a point of contact every altar speaking against your family right now I stretch my hands upon all of you who are out here at the count of three that fire will fall upon you one two three take that fire take that fire take that fire take that fire I decree and declare those altars are set ablaze I release your parents I release your loved ones I release your parents I release your families help them please every altar that has stood as a resistance to the growth of your family be destroyed now I not only pray for them I pray for you in the name of Jesus every altar that sponsors hatred that sponsors trouble that sponsors limitation by the power that raised Christ from the dead it is destroyed now are you ready to pray prayer point number one Psalm 3 Psalm 3 please help us media Psalm 3 and verse 1 Lord how they are they increased that trouble me many are they that rise up against me verse 2 many there be which say of my soul there is no help for you in God verse 3 but thou O Lord art a shield for me my glory and the lifter up of my head are you ready to pray say in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that nothing keeps my head down in this season I am lifted supernaturally lift your voice and begin to pray but now oh Lord as a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head Shabbat <laughs> 
In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 12. Please give it to us quickly. Acts chapter 12 from verse 4. The Bible says that Peter was kept in prison. And the Bible says they kept him in prison intending that after Easter they would bring him out so that the people would kill him. Verse 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. What happened? And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains and the keepers before the door that kept the prison. Verse 7. The Bible says, And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and light shined in the prison, and they smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And the chains fell off from his hand. Verse 8. And the angel said unto him, Guard thyself, and bind up thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment before thee, and follow me. Verse 9. The Bible says, And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel. But he saw as though he was in a vision. Ten. Hmm. And when they were past the second, the first gate, there were three gates. The first gate brought him out of the prison. The second gate was midway. And the Bible says they came onto the iron gate that led to the city. Listen to me. This is the gate that stops visibility. There is a gate that stops the visibility of man. It says the gate leads to the city. Your business can be there, but there is an iron gate. Listen. And the Bible says that the gate opened on its own accord. When that gate opens, the next thing you see is the city. It's the gate that controls influence. Are you ready to pray? In the name of Jesus, every gate standing my way of influence and visibility, I declare be broken right now. Lift your voice and pray. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder. He has broken the gates of bars and cut the bars of iron in thunder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Listen to me. We are going to pray against delay. It was the delay of the bridegroom that made the oil of others to finish. If the bridegroom came early, all ten of them would see him. They all had oil, but because the bridegroom delayed, the oil of others finished and they missed out. You are going to pray. Lord, bring speed to my destiny. Bring speed to my life. Lift your voice and pray. Speed to my life. Speed to my destiny. Speed to my life. Speed to my destiny. Speed to my business. Speed to my career. Someone is praying. Stop a 
Pray, pray, outside, pray, online, pray, make decrees in the name of Jesus. 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 We are still praying over speed. Look at me. Listen. The unit of destiny is time. God can bring you help speedily. Are we together now? Yes. We are going to pray. The Bible says, And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. And Elijah ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. We are going to pray. Lord, bring speed to my life. Bring speed to my life. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy. Speed, speed, speed. Someone prophesy. Someone declare. Speed to my destiny. Speed to my destiny. Speed to my destiny. Speed to my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 125, verse 3. Psalm 125, verse 3, please. The Bible says, The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Why? Lest the righteous put their hands in iniquity. The rod of the wicked. You are going to command every finger of darkness and evil over your life, your family, your children. You are going to command it to give way. Are you ready? Lift your voice and pray. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Hallelujah. 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 Job chapter 5, please. Job chapter 5 and verse 19. We are praying. Please take this prayer serious. Job chapter 5 and verse 19. Are you ready to read? Want to read with me? He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven shall no evil touch you. Number one. Next verse, please. In famine. He shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. Next verse. Thou shalt be hid from the scourging tongues of men. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth. Why? Listen. It says, for thou shalt be in covenant with the stones of the field. That means nobody can use any element of creation to make enchantments against me. You use sand, you, I, I have a covenant with the elements of creation that they will not fight me because I was given dominion over them. Say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, no enchantment, no divination against my life and my destiny shall thrive. Lift your voice and pray. I am in covenant. I am in covenant. I am in covenant with the stone. I am in covenant. I am in covenant with the stone. 
Alléluia. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 16. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 16. Please read with me. Are you ready? One to read. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace. How long? Always. By all means. If it means clearing the troublemakers out of the way, by all means. If it means making a way, by all means, lift your voice and say, Lord, by all means, give me peace. 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 Hallelujah. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of prison to them that are bound. There are people physically, you see them moving. But in the realm of the spirit, the Bible says that they are bound. Next verse. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn in Zion. Verse 3. It says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees or the oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. Verse 4, I receive it for myself. It says, and they shall build the old waste, they shall raise up the former desolations, and shall repair the waste cities and desolations of many generations. Verse 5, and strangers... This is where we are getting to. You don't need to know who will help you. Strangers. And strangers shall stand and feed. Listen, listen, listen. Strangers shall stand and feed your flock. It says, and the sons of aliens or foreigners shall be your plowmen. This was what happened to a man called Mephibosheth. The Bible says, and David said, is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And they called a man called Ziba who had 15 sons. The Bible says he sent him to Lodeba. He said, there is a crippled man called Mephibosheth. Go and fetch the man, the king said. When he came, he said, although you are crippled, even Mephibosheth said, am I a dog that the king will be sending for me? He said the children of Ziba would plow the land for him. He said, but as for you, Mephibosheth, you will eat with me at my table here forever. Keep that scripture there. Listen, this scripture is a deliverance scripture. Stop thinking the miracle will come through the person you know. It's none of your business how God will bring you the breakthrough. 
stop troubling your uncle your auntie every time you are saying god visit me your mind is going to a particular person that real estate man leave god to decide who like a movie director let him decide who will come with the blessing are you ready to pray make decrees in this season strangers are feeding my flock strangers are feeding my flock the sons of alien are coming to bless me hell prepare blessings rising from everywhere hallelujah two prayer points and we're done are you ready to pray we're going to pray for nigeria how many of you know that we owe a responsibility to pray for this nation you see the happenings around this nation the church should not be silent it's not about going around to make all kinds of unguarded statements our assignment is to pray pray like believers with intelligence he said pray for the peace of jerusalem they shall prosper who love you we are going to pray we cannot fold our arms and allow the devil to continue to destroy people you heard the testimony of our dear auntie here the precious daughter just came out of the her school and these wicked evil people entered a car and that's how they carried her killed other innocent people whoever digs a pit for you i stand by my god and i declare they must enter that pit hallelujah now listen her man was plotting the annihilation of the jews and he was clearly cooperating with vashti and god needed to remove vashti and when god brought esther esther forgot her assignment and she was enjoying the palace and mordecai sent a warning that warning is for all of us every time you hear trouble somewhere don't say it's still far don't make the mistake of esther mordecai said do not think when they are done with us from afar you will be spared the moment you hear that there is trouble anywhere you owe a responsibility to stay the power of hell don't just say i am secured esther knew that if she kept quiet one day they would discover she were a jew and they would kill her and she took the risk i'm going to meet the king even without his invitation if i perish i perish one of the things i'm praying and trusting that god will do to the body of christ is to help us to rise to that point of maturity where we are able to take the corporate burden of the body even if personally there is nothing wrong with us are we together when you hear that there is an accident you don't just say oh the members of my church were protected it is a cry for everybody are we together now you must be able to hide your individualism so that the corporate good of the body will speak so just because nothing happened to your business during the pandemic just because you are okay just because you have security forces around your house does not mean you should negate the fact that our nation needs help as responsible believers part of the ministry of priesthood is to stand and midwife deliverance and say no lord it cannot happen not in our lifetime this kind of evil that plagued the nations we must stand as priests are we together hmm. for a very long time we have been largely very selfish once trouble does not come near you you read the news and say oh that's fine it is them once it is not your child that is kidnapped no problem no we are going to pray in one minute cry to the god of heaven father we declare let the angels be released over nigeria let the angels be released over this nation we declare peace we declare safety we declare peace we declare safety we declare peace we declare safety we declare peace we declare safety
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me make decrees over our lives now. Decrees are powerful. Hallelujah. Prophetic words don't only reveal, they create. They make what is not there to be there. We can call the things that be not and make them to appear. We can call the favor that be not and make it appear. We can call the lifting that be not and make it appear. Are you ready to pray? In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, every door that has refused to open over your destiny, I declare, let it be open right now. Let it be open right now in the name of Jesus. Everywhere the helpers of your destiny are, men instructed by God to hold your hand and lift you. I don't care where they are across this nation and around the globe. I stand by the voice of prophecy and I command them to show up in your life. 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 Listen to me. Every strange pattern and occurrence in any family, circles of negative things that keep repeating themselves, I stand by the God of heaven and I come by the rod of a higher priesthood. I break those patterns now. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. The Bible says the mom bore him in sorrow and named him Jabez. And for a while things would not go well in his life. And one day he said, oh that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast. Is someone ready to pray? Listen, God is a God of increase. Is it is the will of God that you keep moving from glory to glory not that you become stunted in one position I pray for you in the name of Jesus expand expand to the left expand to the right I'm praying for you by the power of the Holy Ghost expand to the east expand to the north expand to the south expand to the west expand overseas in the name of Jesus Christ Let's decree favor. Ah. In the name of Jesus Christ, the kind of favor you have not seen in your life. I stand by the God of heaven if you can believe it. I declare between now and next week Sunday, return with a fearful testimony of favor. I speak it from the depth of my spirit. Return with a fearful testimony of favor. We shift systems, we shift structures, and I command favor. I declare favor. I command favor. I declare favor. Can I pray for your spiritual life? Everything that has killed your hunger and your passion for the things of God. You used to pray in the night, but now you sleep all till the day. There is a spirit of slumber that wants to eat up your destiny because a new season is about to open for you. So the devil does not want you to stay in the place of prayer. Receive an impartation of the grace, the spirit of prayer and supplication. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. Hear me. We are wrapping up. I'm speaking to you prophetically. There are many of you. Seasons are about to open in your life. But listen, listen. The devil wants to use offense to kill those seasons. Beware. One of the traps of Satan when seasons are about to open is that he uses offense. Everything offends you. 
your husband, your wife, your children, your boss. Make up your mind that your joy will remain because it is with joy you draw out of the wells of salvation. I declare joy unspeakable, joy unspeakable, full of glory, joy unspeakable, full of glory, joy unspeakable, full of glory. Hallelujah. Let me pray for those in business. I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost and I believe in miracles. I don't care how it has been before now. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God, what has refused to walk in your hands? Go back right now and watch wonders happen. Go back right now and watch wonders happen. Go, uh, Go back and watch wonders happen. In the name of Jesus Christ. And whatsoever he doeth prospers whatsoever he doeth prospers one last prayer for tonight there is something called honor see you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself it takes another person to confer honor upon you honor is a grace that is transferable he said thou shalt find Joshua in whom the spirit is upon and he says that thou shalt lay your hands upon him and then he says you shall take some of your honor and you shall give to him honor is transferable the cure for shame and the cure for reproach in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare may this mantle of honor the grace that distinguishes you even among your contemporaries may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now maximizing your destiny a call to fulfill God's purpose beloved today we gather as young adults who are not only full of potential but also anointed and appointed for a divine purpose the world is filled with distractions, challenges, and uncertainties. But the Word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Psalm 119, 105 Our focus today is on maximizing the destiny that God has entrusted to each of us. We are going to explore how we can live out our purpose and fulfill our divine calling. Number 1. Understanding Destiny in God's Kingdom Before we can maximize our destiny, we must first understand what it means in the context of God's kingdom. Destiny is not just about personal success or achieving worldly goals. It's about aligning our lives with God's will and purpose. Jeremiah 29 11 reminds us, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This scripture highlights that our destiny is God-ordained. It's not something we create, but something we discover as we walk closely with Him. Number 2. Embracing Your Identity in Christ To maximize your destiny, you must embrace your identity in Christ. The world will try to define you by your past, your failures, or even by the standards of success it upholds. But in Christ, you are a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Your identity is not based on what you do, but on who you are in Christ. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This means that God has already prepared a path for you to walk in, one that is filled with purpose and meaning. Number 3. Seeking God's Will Through Prayer and the Word Maximizing your destiny requires a deep and consistent relationship with God. Proverbs 3 5 Tark 6 advises us Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. Prayer is the vehicle through which we communicate with God, and the Bible is the roadmap for our journey. When you spend time in prayer and in the Word, 
You align your heart with God's will and gain the wisdom needed to make decisions that are in line with your divine purpose. Number 4. Overcoming Obstacles with Faith and Perseverance Every destiny comes with its challenges, but with faith and perseverance, you can overcome them. James 1 2, 4 encourages us, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. The obstacles you face are not meant to break you but to build you. They are tools in God's hands to mold your character and strengthen your resolve. Number 5. Surrounding Yourself with Godly Counsel One of the keys to maximizing your destiny is to surround yourself with people who will encourage, challenge, and support you in your walk with Christ. Proverbs 13.20 says, Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. The company you keep can either propel you toward your destiny or pull you away from it. Seek out mentors, friends, and leaders who will speak life into you and guide you according to the Word of God. Number 6. Serving Others as an Expression of God's Love Our destiny is never solely about ourselves. It's about impacting others for the kingdom of God. Jesus himself said in Matthew 20:28. 20, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life as a ransom for many. One of the greatest ways to maximize your destiny is to serve others. When you use your gifts, talents, and resources to bless others, you reflect the love of Christ and fulfill the purpose for which you were created. Number 7. Staying Focused on the Eternal Perspective As young adults, it's easy to get caught up in the pursuit of temporal success, career achievements, financial stability, or personal accomplishments. However, maximizing your destiny means keeping your eyes on eternity. Colossians 3 verse 2 instructs us, Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. When you live with an eternal perspective, you make decisions that have lasting value. You invest in relationships, character, and the advancement of God's kingdom rather than in things that will eventually fade away. Number 8. Walking in Obedience and Faithfulness Finally, to maximize your destiny, you must walk in obedience and faithfulness to God's calling. Luke 16 verse 10 says, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. God looks at our faithfulness in the small things before He entrusts us with greater responsibilities. Obedience is not always easy, but it is necessary. When God calls you to step out in faith, do so knowing that He will equip you for the task and reward your obedience. Conclusion. Beloved, the time to maximize your destiny is now. God has placed you in this generation for a reason. You are here to make a difference, to shine His light in a world that desperately needs it. Don't settle for anything less than God's best for your life. Remember that your destiny is not about achieving worldly success, but about fulfilling God's purpose for your life. As you leave today, let the words of Paul in Philippians 3 verse 13 to 14 resonate in your heart. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Press on, beloved. Maximize your destiny and let your life be a testament to the power and glory of God. Amen. Please don't hesitate to like and share our contents. You can follow us on all of our social media platforms at Believers Global TV. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.